Hello, this is Ben with another update from Mysterious Space. Uh, I have jumped up a minor version. The last one was like a 0.4.6. I'm now going to, this next release is going to be 0.5.0. 0, 0. Why would I do that? I've made some like crazy UI changes. And I feel like, I don't know, when things change, I guess the user interface, it feels like user interface changes really do demand the great, uh, greater changes. I don't know why. Just the game feels different, even, even if maybe the rest isn't so much different. Although, that being said, there have been a lot of changes. Look at this change log. Oh my god. Um, so, and I'm going to talk about some of that stuff. So, you will notice this collection screen. Uh, let's not look at that yet. And we should just start a new game. Although, I should do the Konami code so that we can uh, take a look. Konami code. Right, so, this was kind of ill-planned on my part. Let's not do no tutorial this time, but thank you. Oh no, we can't go back now. All right, so uh, sorry, I was just before I did this testing a uh, a new thing in the settings menu. So let's look. Uh, there's now a reset tutorial thing. If you ever play the game and there's a pound sign on either side of a of some text, that means it's a translation screen that hasn't been translated. It might seem weird that it's in English because that feels awfully translated. But the way the code is set up, there's like a default string for any, like English is a language, there, there's no such thing as, as a default language really. Anyway, so reset tutorial. When you click this, your tutorial progress is reset. And the reason I've done that is that there's going to be some additional steps of tutorial, not just the one up front that kind of teaches you how to move and shoot, but later on it's going to teach you what this mess is about, the new selection screen uh, for, oh they're both ice worlds, that's less interesting. Anyway, so yeah, what's up with this crazy new screen? The thing that's up with this crazy new screen is I, I wanted navigating the mysterious space to be more interesting. Um, previously, it was it was just that straight line, uh, and every now and again it was like, oh, do you want this planet or do you want this other planet? But otherwise, you're just progressing in a straight line. And I had talked about this before. My goal is not just to make it more interesting, but to give way, a way for people to choose their difficulty level. Um, so here's what I mean. If you look at this little graph, you can probably find a way that's fast to get to the mysterious source at the end, it's blinking with the exclamation mark, or you could find a way that's slow. Why would you take a faster or a slower route? And the reason is that by taking a faster route, you're going to be skipping some difficulty levels. Every planet has a, a difficulty rating, um, and they go from 1 to 9. And so if you take a, a quick route, like going this upper route here, you know, if I went this lower route, I would go one, two, three, three at this little intersection in the middle. Um, or you could go here, and that would actually be two, three. You would skip the one difficulty. So, and what that means is you'll be facing higher level monsters, but you, of course, won't have got the opportunity to get more equipment to face those monsters with. Why you would do that? <laughs> Why would you make the game more difficult for yourself? Because maybe the game is too easy. Um, and Or if the game is too hard, even on the normal setting, you can take a super long route. So like if you go this upper route up here, um, that will actually have you repeat some difficulty levels, giving you a chance to get more things. I kind of worry that if you play it, I feel like more opportunities to get shot is more difficult, and so actually going through more levels might be a little more risky, and so I'm really going to have to play with this, because I do think it is important that people should be allowed to kind of choose their difficulty level, choose the challenge that you want, you know, I mean, do you want to like rush through the game, try not to get much of equipment? Um, another problem uh, would be scores, if you go through fewer levels you're going to get a lower score, um, but I think that I can pretty much solve. Uh, what I would do is give you more points for taking shorter paths and less points for taking longer paths. Like it just be a fraction depending on the number of planets you're going through, um, and that should, like, like the the score would be. Oh, on this planet you get 80% of the score because uh, what would that be? Like you're going through four planets instead of five, or would that be five instead of six? But you get what I mean. I'll figure out that math um, to make sure that you are you're getting the same number of points roughly. And if it ends up a little different. Especially if it ends up that taking a harder route gets you a few more points, you know, than a, than a, than an easier route, that would be great. Um, so, but the other thing to look at that I kind of skipped over real quick, uh, you can see that the tabs here uh, that, do, that doesn't look so great. Uh, but there's a new tab. There's an equipment and an inventory tab, and I'm still struggling with this. I I feel like I feel like this new equipment screen makes it easier to equip things. Maybe is less obvious about what's going on. Um, so, 
initially I was going to get rid of this inventory screen with a straight line entirely um, and put everything into equipment and maybe add um, like an alien artifact option or whatever. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. So for inventory, this is where you want to go if you want to use alien artifacts, which is important. You need to be able to use these guys in the middle of the level. But when you want to look at equipment, it was really hard on this screen. Like, suppose I want to know the difference between these two uh, whole repair bots. Are they different? Okay, what's this? Mm, one point every 1.6 seconds. Okay, what was this one? One point every 1.6 seconds. Okay, they happen to be the same. But when you get into, like, weapons especially, you might have two things, or armors, where you're like, well, 118, okay, this is 50, but does that, and does that, and, you know, you're trying to keep the numbers in your head, going back and forth, looking at, at what they do, and it's really kind of a pain in the ass. Um, especially, I mean, this is kind of, this situation is okay, so because I did the Konami code, I start with all these items, and they're all conveniently grouped. But as you go through the levels, imagine if, you know, here's where all my shields are, but then I pick up a new shield, and so it's actually all the way at the end, because everything just gets added to the end. And I could do sorting and blah, 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 but now you just go into shield, and you can see all your shields, and you can choose which one you want. Um, and and it like this I, this is kind of a fake situation where I have ten of them. Like I'm still doing as much scrolling as before. In real gameplay, you're not going to have ten shields. You're going to have like two or three that you actually care about, and the rest you'll throw away because there's no reason to keep them. You're not selling things. Um, and so what the real problem is is of like a new shield gets added to the end of the list, and so you're skipping over twenty non-shield items. Most of them are alien artifacts. Trying to find the shield that you want. Um, so yeah, this is not the best. Uh, set up to demonstrate the convenience of the equipment screen, but trust me, it's super convenient uh, to be able to do this. And if you've played the game before this version, you will probably recognize that just by looking at this as well, and you may be saying, thank God you can stop talking about it now, because I realize the wonderful goodness. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what to do about this inventory screen. Showing the equipment here is redundant. Um, what you would really come here for, I imagine, is to quickly access your alien artifacts. Uh, but if the alien artifacts are still getting mixed up, you know, this doesn't help for using alien artifacts. I pick up a new alien artifact, and now it's way at the end, or it's mixed somewhere in here with all the other things I've picked up. So I think what I'm going to do... <sighs> See, I don't know. Because, for example, I, I could just hide all of the equipment from this screen, but you're going to want to still get these ship parts and be like, what's inside? And if you open it and then it's now it's revealed and so it's removed, then you can't look at it, right? Does that make sense? So I don't know. Or, or do I just show all the hidden parts are only in here? But, but then you have to go find them in here. And I feel like at the end of the level, you quickly want to see, oh, what did I pick up? What did I pick up? I want to find out, you know? So one solution is to I, I could do is to make the items not be unidentified when you find them. The reason I made items unidentified when you first pick them up is because I, for some reason, and maybe I just need to go back on this, I didn't want people to re-equip while they were on the planet. Um, I kind of wanted you to deal with the with the equipment you had on that planet and use it, um, and and not allow you to equip better stuff, which is which is just a way of making the game harder. But it felt weird. So before I before you used to pick up an, in the very beginning, you would pick up an item and you'd see exactly what it was, but you weren't allowed to equip it because oh, you can't change equipment while on a planet. And when I was playing this with my game designer friend Steven, he was like, well, that feels kind of shitty. I picked up this cool new thing. I want to use it, which is fair. And he said, well, here's what we can do. If if you want it, if if you think it's important to the game, that you can't equip things until you leave the planet. Just make it so you don't know what it is. It's a mysterious package, and you get to open it and discover the amazing secrets. And so that's the route I went. You get out of the planet, and you're like, oh my god, what did I get? A harder, heavy, buy blaster B. That's amazing. That's what I always wanted. Or whatever. So it, it adds a little, an extra little excitement, potentially, to open up these things. Maybe not. If most of them are junk, then maybe you get tired of that little game. Uh, but that's what I was going for. So, you know, and if if this new UI just makes that all dif too difficult, or maybe, you know, maybe it's really not that important that um, you can't equip equip new things while on a planet. Maybe I just say, fine, you just, you just can. Everything is, is immediately revealed. Uh, these are the problems I'm thinking about with, with the inventory management. And inventory management is a problem. This is how I'm trying to solve it. I feel like I've rambled about this quite enough. Uh, but these are the big things that have changed. There's this new equipment page um, where you can hopefully more easily compare equipment. Uh, you can see I'm still having some problems with text escaping its its boundaries and everything. 
Um, you know, like the end is on the bottom, press enter to identify. I don't think you can even throw things away on the screen, yeah, but you can throw things away here. There are also, so I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let's uh, save and quit and start a new one so I can show you some of the new alien artifact effects. And actually one of them I have not tested yet, so we'll discover it together. Uh, alien artifacts. Um, oh, because I reset. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we do not want a tutorial, but thank you. All right, so if we go into a... First, we should upgrade to reveal all the alien things. And then let's go. Let's go to this wonderful forest, and let's try out some new alien artifacts. You are slowed for 10 seconds. So this is new. I used to have an alien artifact that said you do not get points for 10 seconds. And really... So... I, I've always felt like I didn't enjoy the bad potions in, in a traditional roguelike. You know, you have a mix of good and bad. I understand why they're there, because it's supposed to be a risk of like, like, are you really going to drink this brown potion in the middle of a fight? You don't know if it's healing, but you also don't know if it's poison. Like, you know, so it's a risk. You're supposed to get to somewhere safe. And I think that's interesting. Um, and so I, I wanted to have... I felt, though, that you could kind of get the same effect by having alien artifacts that just aren't good or maybe have smaller inconveniences. But I really didn't like the idea that that you would get one and you'd just kind of be super screwed for an amount of time. Anyway, so I thought, okay, don't get points for 10 seconds. That's relatively harmless. You can keep playing the game. Most people don't care about their score. The problem is, I think, just, like, why would you even care about your score? Like, it's not a good enough penalty. So slowed for 10 seconds, I think, is a little more interesting. Um... And especially because it's slowed, so it's the same kind of slow you receive from getting shot with EMP weapons, and there are other items in the game that interact with EMP effects, whereas nothing really interacts with you don't get points. Like, this is more tied into other mechanics that we can hook onto. And now I can't identify these ship parts, but there are some, um, I created a accessory that responds somehow when you're under the influence of EMP, and I forget what it is. Uh, and there's also a, a ship that you can unlock, and I should show off those as well in this video, uh, that just doesn't, isn't slowed as much. And so, you know, there's, a, there's other, and slow is an important gameplay thing, particularly because it has to do with movement. So that's another thing that I did. I, um, every now and again I watch, uh, you know, game design videos that people have done on YouTube or, or even on, uh, why can't I think of the name? They don't do them as much. Uh, the, the, the TED Talks, TED Talks. Sometimes they talk about game design on TED Talk, but, but not as much. Um, but anyway, so I, I went back and rewatched one from a long time ago, and he was talking about drawing uh, these skill trees, not that would be within the game, but are within the player's mind. So he gave the example of Mario, of, you know, one skill you learn is moving left and right. You, you kind of take that for granted, but no, moving left and right, you, have to, you figure out how to do that. And you figure out details about that, like you can't really move left as much as you'd like because the game only scrolls forward, you know, in the original Nintendo one. You also learn the skill jumping. And when you combine those two skills, and here's where you start to get the tree, you're like, okay, jumping plus moving equals kill a Goomba. And then you could even say, okay, jumping plus moving equals landing on a, stomping a Goomba. Stomping on a Goomba plus jumping equals jumping higher. And that's a skill that you have to learn. And so he was talking about drawing out these trees of skills that, that players learn and looking to make sure... Like, it gives, it, it's a useful tool because you can say, oh, they never learned about jumping on Goomba's heads, so, you know, to get that extra jump, and, and maybe that skill is required for other things, and so, but because they, they didn't get that point, they, they, they're missing, like, all this, this all, everything that stems from it, you know, all the skills that come from that one skill are, are now invisible to that player, and they can't do that. And so, using it as a tool to see, uh, you know, where players might be missing things, and blah, blah, blah. So I started to draw out this tree, and, and what I realized, I, I think another benefit of doing this tree that I discovered by doing it, is seeing what skills are really important. And in the case of alien artifacts, for example, alien artifacts should be used in those skills. So I mean, I'll tell you, so here's what I discovered. Moving is a super important skill in this game, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of obviously true. Shooting and aiming and hitting enemies is also important, but most of the things you need to do involve moving. You need to explore the planet in order to find the fuel and get these pickups. You need to dodge um, force fields, which in recent versions of this game, actually, I accidentally took out. I'm going to put them back in, uh, but with different, uh, differently. I'm going to put them back differently because they're kind of stupid before. But anyway, so dodging uh, force fields, dodging bullets, 
you know, knowing, okay, you shoot an enemy and he's going to explode, you want to dodge that shot, blah, blah, blah. Lots of the game is about moving. There's much less shooting than there is moving. And yet most of the alien artifacts were affecting shooting and fighting, like faster fire rate, getting points is mostly to do with, with shooting. I guess not, I mean, you get a lot from fuel too. Um, so when I made a new alien artifact, and actually I looked at the alien artifacts, none of them affected how you moved at all. So there is now the slowing artifact, there is also a hasting artifact, um, and there is this inverts your controls for 10 seconds. That's the one I haven't tested, uh, but I want to find the haste artifact. Here it is. Your speed is increased by 50% for 10 seconds. That's a hasting artifact. And I believe I made an accessory that uses this mechanic, like increasing your speed for a time by a percent wasn't in the code before at all. Since I went ahead and put it there, I thought, oh, I should, you know, put that on an arm or an accessory or something. I forget where I put it, but there is some new item. I think it is actually an armor, like when this armor takes damage, you get a speed boost. So that exists. Um, so we can do that, and, and let's try it out. Woo! Yeah, we go so much faster. That's amazing. Okay, and let's also get inverting controls. So anyway, that was the thing. I saw most of your actions by drawing that tree of skills that the player has to learn and use, I saw that most things, or there were many more things stemming from movement than from shooting, and yet most alien artifacts were had to do with shooting, and there were none for moving. So, whoa, what? Makes them for moving. So that was really useful. I thought that was really interesting. I, that isn't something that that video talked about. It was just something that fell out, another benefit of that drawing skill trees, and I thought that was kind of cool. Um, a lot of times when I make games, I don't really... Like, there are some game design principles that I've learned. I, I never went... When I went to college, I just learned programming. I never learned game design because they didn't teach it when I was in college. Uh, they, they started teaching it in grad schools, but I was quite finished with school and, and no interest <laughs> in going back for all that. Um, so, so anyway, so I, I pick up these things, and, and I should really try applying them more. Um, because that was a really cool thing that came out of that, and so I'll definitely continue to do that sort of thing. But anyway, let's try the inverted controls because I have not tested that. Uh, and it totally doesn't work, so there you go. But it will work by the time I release. Um, so something that I cannot demonstrate because I did the Konami code, and one of the things that the Konami code does is puts all the enemies on all the levels, even though they shouldn't be. Also, I'm still moving so fast. When is that speed boost going to run out? I've been working on that UI stuff so much I haven't tested out the new alien artifacts. I don't think the speed boost is ever going to end. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, so, the thing you cannot see so well because many enemies are being spawned is that um, now depending on the difficulty so let's let's get back out to a map ah. the the further you go in to the system the more enemies will be allowed to be on screen previously there was no limit no matter where you were you could end up with like 20 enemies and I had my uh, I visited my dad shortly after yeah after Christmas not actually for Christmas but but just the days following uh, and he he used to play games, but it's been a very long time. He's not, like, he's the sort of person who, you know, I, I showed him Katamari Damacy a long time ago, and he would try to move the controller and, him, and himself to, to move the Katamari, and it was kind of funny to watch. But I had him play this game, um, and it was interesting to see the difficulties he was having, um, and even though he is, like, a total noob, and we obviously would not want to build the difficulty of the game around his experiences, there were some things that he did that were useful to note, and some problems he had that were, that were useful to note. And one of them was that just in the beginning game, he's, he's, he was bad at shooting, and so by the time he killed one enemy, two or three new ones had already been spawned, and so he was just ending up completely swamped. And it occurred to me that, yeah, like, the, the timer be between, uh, you know, the timer for spawning new enemies is kind of short, and it would be easy for you to get overwhelmed. And if you've never played a game like this, um, that might be difficult. You know, shooting is not necessarily a skill that you have. Um, so now, based on the difficulty of the world you're on, again, they go from 1 to 9, and, and now you can skip or repeat some based on this new path, um, there is a cap on the number of enemies that can be on screen, and so the swarms don't count, I'm ignoring them because they're special and funny. Um, and, and so again, though, this is a cool place where choosing your difficulty level is, is, is maybe going to be helpful, because if you've already played, um, you might be happy to skip to 2, you don't need to go through 1 and 2. Uh, and in particular, so, and, and again, because, uh, so on the very first difficulty levels, there's only going to be two enemies max that could be on the screen. Um, and basically I've made the game easier in the first two levels uh, by reducing the variety of the enemies and the number of enemies that can appear on the screen. So what I'm, what I'm also going to do, and this is going to be one of the new tutorials, is that for these 
three down here, only when you reach the third one, I don't know how to say this. Okay, this this top option up here, uh, this this ice world, that option is going to be completely removed from the game until you reach uh, the difficulty three sector just below it. And then I'm going to have the AI girl pop up and be like, oh, your first choice, because you won't have made one up until then. Why would you make a choice? You know, and she's going to explain, you know, if you take the faster path, you're pro it's probably going to be harder for you. Um, so, you know, d take whatever path you're comfortable with. And then after that point, when you start new games, you'll get this shortcut so that you can skip the first two levels and kind of skip to the, the meatier parts of the game. That's the goal, to give people a little more of a tutorial and, and then also, yeah, why would you choose? You don't really know. So she's going to introduce it at a later time. I, I don't want to throw it all at the player at once. Um, I'm also, another thing he realized, and I've seen some other people have trouble with this as well, is so he would just like sit up here in space and, and he thought that this little blinking arrow, he's like, yeah, I saw it, but I thought it was telling me to dodge enemies. And it's true, it's not 100% clear. And the, the changing backgrounds didn't seem to mean anything to him. And he was just sitting here fighting enemies, except doing much worse at moving than I am uh, and aiming. Although even I'm not doing that great. <laughs> um, and he wasn't understanding that he needed to go down to look for the fuel. You know, for all he knew, enemies dropped it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to make it when you first... I'm going to do a couple things. Until you first descend into the atmosphere, I'm not going to show anything on the screen. Like, okay, so you see how it's not doing the blinky arrow because I've already gone down. I'm going to make it so that until that blinky down arrow goes away, no enemies will spawn. Because when enemies spawn up here, you're focused on killing them, and you're not discovering the planet below, which you need to do. The other thing is I want the lady to tell you, oh, I've detected, you know, crazy enemies. Watch out. Um, but also remember that the priority here is finding fuel, and you'll need to explore the depths of the planet to find it. I mean, she needs to tell you how to find because, because yeah, if you haven't played the game at all, you just be sitting up here being like, where do I find this stuff? Fighting enemies. P.S. I love these rainbow effects. Um, and you would never find the fuel. You'd just be fighting enemies being like, why don't they drop me fuel? Uh, I think, I don't know. I don't know what to think about the fact that my dad never went down and looked at the planet and thought anything about it. It's possible that there wasn't a good enough context of movement for him. Like, you've got the stars in the background. But, I don't know, and that was a thing he mentioned. He said it was hard for him to tell when he was moving versus the enemies moving. You know, like that effect when you sit in a car and a truck goes by you. Um, so, it, it feels like you're moving even though you're not. So, I, I don't know... I have no uh, camera, like the camera is all, you're always perfectly centered, so there isn't a whole lot of sense of you moving, so I may play with some camera lerp. I had kind of played with it early on in the game and didn't like it because it reduced what you can see, but I might experiment with a little, a, a little more uh, and see if I can come up with something. So anyway, I learned some interesting things out of that. Uh, the other thing I said I was going to show you was the new... Okay, so let's talk about this. There are new items you can pick up, blueprints. And when you get, so you can see this is, is one, one third, maybe that's not super clear, this is, this is blueprint one of three. When you get all three, you will unlock the head of Hydra's ship. Um, and all of your, the player ships, just like the enemies, I'm all naming after stars and constellations and things. So, you know, we've got like Swarming, Syrah, there's so many weird star names that I, I just don't, I don't think about them, I don't know them. The head of Hydra's is, is not the official name, uh, but it's the name of the star that is in the Hydra's constellation that if I ever knew existed, I forgot. Anyway, that's the name of a star. It made a cool ship name to me. Um, so anyway, each blueprint kind of gives you a hint as to the sort of ship you're unlocking. So this one tells us it's a blocky frame capable of supporting more armor than most ships it sizes. Hmm? What, would, what will the other two say? And once you get all the blueprints for a ship, you unlock the ship. Uh, this ship requires three. There is another ship that requires two blueprints, and there's another ship that only requires one blueprint. Once you get that one blueprint, you're done. And it just so happens to be a one, two, three. Uh, when I add more ships, and when I added these ships, I'm do I'm basing the number of blueprints on the number of tweaks to the underlying, like to the mechanics. Like the the more a ship deviates from the standard ship, the more blueprints I'm requiring. Uh, I don't 100 percent know why. I, I partly I felt like it was a good way to introduce them kind of slowly, like the fact that the gameplay style might be entirely different. But I think by the time you unlock one of these ships you would have played enough that you'd be pretty comfortable with that. I don't know, we'll play around. Um, also any logs that you have found uh, will appear here. So you can see all the items you've collected that 
that you, you know, there's no reason to, to get multiple times. Uh, logs, you don't get anything for getting all the logs of a, of a certain color. They are broken down by color, uh, which is reflecting the race of, of, the, of the thing, uh, so, which, which isn't necessarily described in the game, which I'm fine with. You, you would kind of discover it by noticing, huh, all the white ones are all in caps and seem very terse. That's interesting. All of the, you know, whatever. Uh, but it, the blueprints are also in different colors. Anyway, so let me show you the crazy things the ships do. Uh, and for that, I'm going to have to edit the game a little bit. I wasn't the most prepared. Oh, uh, where is that? I think that's in settings. Um, settings. Yeah, here we go. We can add. We we make the we. I'm cheating and telling the game that you can make any of the ships. So, when you have the other ships unlocked, and you can you, you probably saw their names there. Uh, let me center this again. Centered enough. Uh, no, that's bad. I want to center it better. Okay. Now you get to choose what ship you want before you even name it. So, I don't know if this is the best order, but alien ship is the one that I've said you only need one. Um, the main thing it does is now alien artifacts are like totally different. Another reason I wanted to make this one, even though it does have probably based on the number of changes to mechanics, it should be two blueprints, but the alien artifact, like not wanting to deal with that game is, is a thing that I personally feel. <laughs> I'm not super thrilled with the alien artifact or the, the potion identification game in Roguelikes, as I've mentioned many times before. Anyway, so this is the ship that you might want if you were like, no, I don't like alien artifacts. I just want it to be easy. Um, and this is it. It doesn't matter. Instead, this is an alien ship, and so alien artifacts, it just uses them to good effect all the time, regardless of what they are, regardless of what they say they will do, which is kind of funky, but there you have it. You also start with a different shield, just a little more fun. Um, the other ships, this is the uh, head of Hydrus. It can equip two armors, which is super bizarre, and cannot equip shields. Oh my goodness. Collision damage reduced by 80%. So the idea with this ship is you would run into things. I haven't played with it a whole lot to know if it is, uh, if it works 100%. <laughs> um, I, I played with it enough to know that ramming into things all the time at low levels is still dangerous. What you really want is, so you start with a generating armor, as it mentions. I also added an accessory that makes your hull regenerate. That's an accessory you can get. Um, I mean, you know, at lower levels you should still shoot things, but running into things isn't so bad, and I really hope that at higher levels and with the right equipment, it is the sort of ship where you just go plowing into things and don't even care. And then, for kind of the opposite, uh, there's a small fast ship, I forget what it's called, um, the slowing effects, that this is the one I was talking about, it, it is not slowed as much, it's super fast, um, and it, you, you have fewer weapon slots. That's the trade-off. Are one of these, you know, is, is the ship strictly worse? Is this strip sh ship strictly better? or the other way around, I don't know. I'm not super concerned. Like, if you unlock a ship that's you know makes the game easier, then that's another way to choose your difficulty setting. And if you choose a ship that's harder and you want that challenge, it's another way to choose a difficulty setting. So I would like them to be approximately equal. I'm, I don't think it's really, it'll be really hard to make them exactly equal, and I don't think it's important that they be exactly equal. So I'm not gonna necessarily super try. Like, again, I would like them to be roughly equal, and so that's why there are these trade-offs. But if it turns out that, like, this ship is just a little better, or just a little worse, or something, I, this is the one I have the most trouble balancing, and I'm definitely going to have to play with it more. Uh, and I will leave that to you guys as well. I'm not going to test these things maybe as thoroughly as I should before releasing. Um, but, you know, we'll play with it, and, and, and tweak it over time. These are the only ships. I don't have more, uh, but I will definitely continue to think of new ideas, and if other people have new ideas, that'd be awesome. I really want these ships, as I think I've mentioned before, to appeal to different play styles. Like, I don't want to get hit, you know, I'm going to land my shots, I'm a skilled player, you know, I can do this, and then the movement speed is going to help me a lot. Um, I'm hoping that's a play style. I, I feel like it is, because you move real fast, it's cool, you shoot guys and, and they don't shoot you, and, and, and you're good at video games. I feel like this is that ship. Um, and he really benefits from the up graded controls, I feel. Uh, and then again, you know, don't want to deal with the alien artifacts, maybe you're happier with, with you know, the reduced speed that doesn't bother you. It's, it's, I don't really feel the reduced movement speed on him. Uh, hopefully your score feels it in the end, I don't know. Um, or, or not, because the alien artifact counter, you know, again, the balance. Anyway, these are meant to address different things that players want to do in the game, uh, so that's what I'm really looking for in the new ship designs. 
Uh, and so, yeah, I, like a part of me is just really tempted to be like, well, what if you had a ship that like did this crazy thing? It has a, a built-in weapon or, or you know, it can, it can have two shields or, or whatever. Um, like it's, tempted, it's tempting to just like go crazy with the mechanics, but I, I really want to not end up with a bunch of useless ships. They're just a little different um, that no one plays. I want the ships to address different wants that the player would have about how they're going to play the game. So, so I don't know. Anyway, I believe that is all the things I have to show you. I'm going to try and have this out, I don't know, as soon as possible. Uh, I need to fix, obviously, those alien artifact bugs that we discovered. Um, I'm still working on that equipment screen, also, as we talked extensively, probably too extensively about. Once those issues are fixed, I'm going to be pretty happy with the release. Oh, and the new tutorial things. Uh, two new screens that'll pop up with dialogue, just, kind of just like the one we saw, you know, where she pops up and says, oh, I, blah, 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 do you want to do this or that? Um, it'd be the same thing, but even shorter. It would just be a little pop-up that's like, here's why you would make choices, done. Um, or look for fuel, don't worry too much about enemies, but, you know, worry enough, they'll follow you. Uh, you know, just quick little tips like that uh, the first time that you encounter the situation. Um, anyway, once those things are in, I will release... And I hope it's it's it is kind of a big release. The, the UI changes are significant. That's kind of what initially made me gave it the move up a minor version from four point whatever to five. Uh, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's in here that I mean, the new system solar si uh, not solar system but sector map or whatever. I mean, that thing is significant um, and is I hope not too many bugs. I'm going to need to test that a lot too. Uh, but yeah, it's big. It's big. I think I think it deserves the the point five. And so I I hope people. Uh, will be excited to, to try it out. Uh, definitely let me know, give me feedback. Um, I also want to thank, actually, what's this guy's name? I always forget, Cirrus Miner. I was trying to find his name. He mentioned a bug on the high scores. We thought it was archi like specific to maybe 64-bit or the version of Windows. It turned out to be a stupid bug I had made um, with, with scrolling when there was only one item in the high scores. There was a similar bug in the continue game that I also fixed, and so I was able to fix that uh, thanks to him pointing it out. Th there are things like that, like a bug on the high score table when there's only one entry. Uh, when would I encounter that? Like, I, I have so many entries in here because I've been playing so much. I wouldn't really think to delete that, you know, and try without. Um, it's something I should think to do, but it's easy to forget about those sorts of things. So I'm really glad that he, he pointed that out, um, and, and it's been fixed. So there you go, Sirius Minor. Also, I love his name because it's space-related. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for playing. I will get this released hopefully in the next few days. And goodbye. Goodbye.